How is it? How about we just have Haggard's <laughs> eyes <laughs> <He's just laughs> peeking in there? <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> What's up? Hey, brother, and welcome everyone to another exciting episode of J versus Ben, where today we are taking on the internet's hardest care of magical creatures quiz. This is gonna be tough. This is, there's like so many small, little, teensy tiny little details that Hagrid or someone says during class that it's going to be relevant, and it's like, I know, like, I've been trying to think about like beasts all day and it, it occurs to me that it could just be questions about like, what did Malfoy call Hermione and you know. Uh, yes, because right? the quizzes are always a little fast and loose with like the <laughs> topic. It's like, this it happened during this class, therefore, therefore it, it is count. fair game, my friend. Okay, it's not summer break quiz, guys. Okay. <laughs> Which of Malfoy's arms was marred by Buckbeak the Hippogriff? Right, something like that. Right, left. Trick oh, question. It's one of Neither. those. He's just acting. Ha <laughs> ha. What, what would you put for that? Would you put that he's just acting? I'm dying. Cause I mean, I feel like he does get like bitten. He gets like lightly you know. scraped. Uh, you know. uh, a scratch. A scratch. A, a flesh wound. Right. Anyway, let's dive on into the quiz. Oh, it's killed me. It's killed me. In case you guys are new to the J versus Ben format, this is how it is going to work. One of our editors, Ethan, is on the other end of the camera. He's waving, but you can't see him. He's going to be reading us today's 14 questions. Yes, 10 from the quiz and four from our Patreon quiz masters. Ben and I will have to answer all the questions completely from memory, unless we both agree we have no idea, in which case Ethan can give us the multiple choice. It could happen today. Yeah, it could happen today. I'm gonna go right arm. Oh. Question number first. What book was on Harry's set list for the third year of Care of Magical Creatures class? I got it. This is one of those where um, it's it feels like it wasn't completely thought out because I'm pretty sure during Harry's first year, he is, one of his required readings is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them Correct. by Newt's Commander. Even though like, he doesn't have care of magic creatures yet. Exactly. Also, the way this question is worded, I this is like one in high school where I'd be like, his third year of care of magical creatures. So he starts in year three. This is actually the question about book six. This is that you're exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And, and, you'd like, like, <laughs> and you'd be like, actually, they don't take it in book six because they all drop the class and they feel bad. It's a trick question. No book. Wrong. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's the answer right here. He did no book because he <laughs> drops the class. Yep. Take that, Mrs. Price. Yeah. Really just messing with you in the first yeah, They just first came question. out guns a-blazing, or guns fangs a-blazing, blazing, I should say, because the answer is the Monster Book of Monsters. Monster Book of Monsters. It is indeed the Monster Book of Monsters. Right, it has been you. on our set for the past, like, four years or something. Also, I believe, I think, it, I think, yeah, I'm pretty, away pretty sure it just got awesome. given away. It has to be somewhere to find them was Defense Against the Dark Arts reading. I believe for that year, except for the fact that they talked about creatures all of book three. Like that's Lupin's entire class. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, well, Lupin, you know, Lupin it, does do a lot with creatures. Coral is holding an iguana though. It is. So. You know, okay. The most magical creature. <laughs> the, the most, most magical. <laughs> that is, yeah. That, that's one of those oddities where it's like, huh, what? Huh, an iguana. But it's not even no, it's just from Florida. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, guys, you might travel here someday. There's this place called the Wizarding World. Our kind like to visit. See, Maybe, okay, so we always play the game. Is it magical or is it just British? Yeah. This is the opposite. For, this is for, the opposite. For British yeah. kids. <laughs> yeah. just like, is it magical or is it Floridian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> yeah, is it the dark arts or is it Floridian? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Question two, what was the name of the hippogriff that Hagrid showed Harry's class in their first Care of Magical Creatures lesson? Is this a trick question or? I'm not at liberty to tell you. Okay, well, I don't have any guess other than 
<laughs> the obvious. So, yeah. All right, three, two, one. Buckbeak. Buckbeak. It is Buckbeak. Yeah, oh, sorry, Witherwings. <laughs> no, actually, the, tr- the trick is that it changed its name later on to Witherwings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Not that anyone ever successfully calls Buckbeak Witherwings without failing to call him Buckbeak first. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Buckbeak, I mean <laughs> Witherwings. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> wink, wink. You're not fooling anyone, man. So, guys... Nobody's worried about this hippogriff anymore. Yeah, right, right. Please, for the love of God. Right, this was just Lucius Malfoy kind of being a like a jerk like four years ago. So let's just yeah. it's Buckbeak, all right? Yeah, this is also when the governors of the school seemed like a much bigger deal. Right, right. And, and then then they weren't anymore. Right. They're like, yeah, we can do things, even though the headmaster is also supreme mugwump. <laughs> Basically, the the modern day wizarding <laughs> world. Yeah, I know. Right, king slash <laughs> right. Basically, leader of Wizard United Nations and sits on Wizard Supreme Court and is the principal of a high school. And these 12 governors are like, we're going to have to kill that hippogriff and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> However, <laughs> excuse me, I have a time traveling third grader. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to foil your executioner that wants a kill so bad that he slices a pumpkin in half. Question number three in our first Quizmaster question of the game. This question was submitted by Emma Butler and voted on by patrons. The question, how many hippogriffs were present in Harry's first care of magical creatures class? Oh, that's a good one. This is what comes to mind. In the book, obviously. In the book, in the movies, one. Just Buckby. With the wings. Um, with, with the yeah. <laughs> oh, good save! Good save! Good save! For a split second, I thought you were talking about a different hippogriff entirely. <laughs> we might have to kill on the spot. <laughs> Look out, McNair might be listening. <clears throat> oh man! Um, okay, this is what I had a number that came to. This is what came, came to, my to my mind. mind. Yeah. I got nothing else. So three, two, one. Twelve. I said six. It is twelve. Yes! yes! Oh, that's yeah! way too many. Oh man, that's a lot <laughs> of hippogriffs. Like a lot of that's hippogriffs. So many hippogriffs. Question number four. Which student received a cut to the arm after failing to approach Buckbeak correctly? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I got it. I think I got it. Was it Crab or Goyle? I can never remember. (laughs) (laughs) Ready? Three, two, one. Draco Malfoy. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Come on. Also, guys, just want to take a quick minute to draw attention to my shirt. Oh, it looks so good. It is, in fact, Pride Month. And over on our Instagram, at Carlin Brothers, we are doing a giveaway. We're giving away five of these shirts. All you have to do is leave a comment and tag a friend. The contest starts today and ends this Friday. Also, if you don't want to, like, risk it, you can just head over to supercarlinbrothers.store and just buy one. They're available there. All the proceeds go to a charitable cause. Question number five. Which student claimed to have been bitten by a flobber worm in Care of Magical Creatures? Mm. This is, it's ironic what I said. Yeah, because that's said crap or goil. Now, what yeah. I said before. You wouldn't yeah. believe how often you do that exact thing. Like, Man, all right, so ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I said crab. I said crab too. It is crab. Yay! Oh, so we are flying. Oh man, whenever it's anything crab or goyle, it's always like, like it could be either. It could be, it's like, and then sometimes like in the book, it's one of them who destroys the Horcrux, but the other one in the movie. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I think the actor of crab like didn't continue to be in there. So right. like, oh, he's, just... he, yeah, he got arrested. Yeah, I, I think right, so, sure. yeah, yeah. So then it ended up just being pretty much like, like like, just, yeah, maybe, it was, maybe the one who's been in the other seven movies. Right, yeah. yeah. It was either Crab or Goyle and, like, Blaze Zabini. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Question number six. What was the name of the teacher that taught Care of Magical Creatures before Hagrid? Oh, mm, oh, oh before wait. Before Hagrid. Before Hagrid. Oh, but so I was to, like, substitute teacher is what I was going for. He... They like wanted to live out the rest of their life with this the remaining, remaining limbs yeah. or appendages or something. Oh, oh no. man. Oh, what is it? It's like, uh, oh, okay. I got there. I got it. Oh, that's not good for me. I was literally about to say like, should we go multiple choice? I, I think I have a guess anyway that I think is right, but I could be wrong. God. You got it. Mm, you gonna get there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I have anything that. Mm. Just, just imagine 
Harry sitting at the, he's sitting, it's the, it's year three, man. He's at the Great Hall. He's listening to Dumbledore. He's enjoying a baked potato. Dumbledore is like, guess what, people? Hagrid's the new care of magical creatures. You got something? Did the baked potato churn your memory? It didn't. Oh. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Kettle burn. Oh, I went with Dr. Ike Razorbeam. Oh. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to say you're wrong. It is Professor Kettleburn. Yes! <laughs> I, like to, I like to think that Dr. Ike Razorbeam also has a cotton candy beard. Dr. Ike, he sounds like it. Although it sounds like he must just eat like razor. So that's, okay, so Kettleburn and razor beam, like razor burn is like a thing. Right, so you were you like the cadence right. You got like close. Yeah, interesting. Right? It like sounds like razor right. burn, kettle burn. I wonder <laughs> razor beam. You know, like how close were you? Were you yeah, <laughs> it's funny because it's like I had nothing. I had, like I, I had nothing, like, and, but it's like apparently my brain was able to give me a prompt that was like in the not even in the zip code. That's that's stretching it to breaking right. point. I think, but. It's not the most absurd thing ever. Yeah, like there was just like a cluster of words somewhere in your brain. It was like, uh, I can give you a bunch of synonyms, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just thinking it'd be you really get the syllables right. To invent this new character who, you know, has a giant cotton candy beard. Yeah. Wow. It looks just oh. like you. Right? Like, Solid. Hey. Whoa. There he is. There's, wow. Yeah, I mean, just picture this, but Ben's face. Yeah. Rule three, you need one more thing about him, Ben. You've got a name, you've got a cotton candy beard. You need one more thing about him to make him a living, breathing character that you will love and cherish forever. Well, maybe his actual name is Dr. Ike Razorbeam. No, he collects fountain pens. Oh, there wow. we go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Who'd have thought? I don't know. Question number seven and the second Quizmaster question of the game. This question was submitted by Nicole McGee and voted on by patrons. Gentlemen, why did Professor Kettleburn retire? Oh! You know... You said kettle burn, but I, I think that you definitely meant razor beam. Yes. When did sorry? When did Doctor Razor or why did Doctor Razor Beam retire? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think that many people will argue that my answer has now become more correct. You think so? It's almost like, like a lot of people are going to go into their books and like with a permanent marker, cross out where it says kettle burn. You get a fountain pen out. Yes. Correctly write in. It's all Dr. coming together. Ike razor beam. <laughs> Doctor Ike Razor Beam <laughs> to spend the remaining. His life remaining with his cotton candy beard. Yeah. Right, three, two, one. So, yeah, to enjoy the rest of his limbs, limbs and appendages. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think the, qu the quote is to spend more time with his remaining limbs. Wow. Okay. 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 Great. But yeah, that's that's you guys excellent. Did, you did the thing where you just we, answered we the are we are ahead all time. over it today, man. I'm not sure there isn't going to be a question where the correct answer is <laughs> Doctor I Grace or Beam at this point. <laughs> We've got a seven to five J lead, by the oh, way. Oh dear, oh dear. Actually, you know what? On that note, as long as Jay is winning, oh, I may no. as well be leaving. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. Well, he's gone. Hello and welcome everybody to the scenic group, where today we're gonna take in the sights a little bit with a little international travel. Well, or at least sort of, because today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Because here's the thing, watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is kind of like only watching the first movie in a trilogy. You're missing out on a lot of good stuff. In case you were unaware, Netflix actually has different libraries of content that are available to you based on where you live. But with ExpressVPN, you can digitally change where you are, which gives you access to every country's libraries. So for example, if you live in Japan, you can watch the movie Knives Out. Or if you're in the Netherlands, you gain access to The Hobbit in the entire Lord of the Rings series. Or if you're in Canada, you get access to one of my all-time favorite movies, The Shawshank Redemption. And you don't even need to be like tech savvy or anything like that. Simply open the app, select Canada, and refresh your Netflix, boom. It's there. And ExpressVPN is compatible with all of your devices, whether it's your phone or laptop or smart TV, and you can stream in HD all around the world. So stop paying full price for only getting a fraction of the library that is actually available and head on over to expressvpn.com slash J versus B. You can get an additional three months free when you use our code expressvpn.com slash J versus B. One last time, that's three months free at expressvpn.com slash J versus B. Link in the description 
down below. Well, while Ben's gone, let's go ahead and talk about something Hagrid isn't so good at. Today's sponsor, HelloFresh. I mean, I don't think he uses HelloFresh. What I mean is that he's not like a very good cook. But you know how it goes. I mean, have you ever felt burnt out on the same recipes you're using from that cookbook your grandma gave you in college when you didn't even know how to cook? Well, then great news because HelloFresh has 30 different dinner recipes you can choose from every week. That's the most choices of any meal kit. And believe me, I have tried a bunch of them and none of them are going to be in that old tattered cookbook of yours. Plus, all the recipes are just totally foolproof, meaning you can have a stress free, joyful cooking experience. And it won't even take you that long because most meals are ready in 30 minutes or less. And if you're a parent, seriously, this is a game changer because it can be so easy to get into that like recipe rut where you just make the same thing over and over and you don't want to like pepper in new things because it's hard and the kids are screaming and you want to turn the TV off and you're like, no, please eat your food. It's time to go to bed. I want to take a bath. But HelloFresh makes it easy to just add in new flavors that will entice not just you or your spouse, but also your kids. Seriously, the meals are crowd pleasers. Everybody likes them. You don't have to do all the grocery shopping. They send you all the items ready to go with the recipe. You can make it in under 30 minutes. Which, which, great news, even if you don't have kids, you can take advantage of all those advantages anyway. So to get started, head on over to hellofresh.com slash jverseb16 and use promo code jverseb16 for up to 16 free meals plus three free gifts. One more time, that's hellofresh.com slash jverseb16, promo code jverseb16, for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Link is in the description down below. And I'm back. Oh, great, yeah, cool, yeah. way to go. I did things, went places. Feel better now, actually. Oh yeah? You're... I have a feeling I'm now in it to win it. Oh, okay. The... Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I'm just gonna put razor beam for the rest of the answer. <laughs> razor <laughs> beam! You know what? There there boy. There's our boy. <laughs> How about we just have Hagrid's eyes? <laughs> <laughs> peek it in there. Hey guys. <laughs> what, what's up? <laughs> He's just peering into the frame. Hey guys. Maybe this is how he like, Despite the fact that Hagrid is quite large, he's also incredibly stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> this is how he's like well, been able look, to observe. Hagrid was successfully getting out of his room as a Gryffindor, apparently, and sneaking all the way down to the dungeons nightly to care for his giant spider Aragog, and no one was noticing, minus Tom Riddle. So I'm not sure. You know, yes, I think he is quite stealthy. <laughs> How about meanwhile, that? I mean, meanwhile, I just... while Harry James Potter, youngest Quidditch seeker in a century, can't take three steps out of bed with an invisibility cloak made by death himself without getting the attention of every caretaker and cat in the castle. Also, he drops a golden egg down the steps. <laughs> Which... A golden egg yes. when screams. he screams. <laughs> that screams when he is tasked with catching a small golden uh, ball. Dude, he I can't hang on to an egg. On. Can't hang on. Question number eight. When filling in for Hagrid in Goblet of Fire, what creature did Professor Grubbly Plank show Harry's class in the first lesson she led? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Unicorns. 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 Question number nine. What did Harry, Ron, and Hermione's third year Care of Magical Creatures exam involve? <coughs> oh yeah, I got this. I'm trying to... Remember. remember. Do you remember any Care of Magical Creatures exams? I feel like we get a lot more. Do we get more Care of Magical Creatures in book four? I feel like I'm confusing a lot of stuff from book four with book three at the moment. Mm. Book four is mostly Blast Ended Screws. Yeah, we do get more Care of Magical Creatures in book four. However, Harry does not have to take exams in book four. Okay. Because he's so a champion. Because he's a champion. Right. So and it then feels book like. Five, there's like OW Wells. And then book six, then I'll take it. So really, there's just one. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. Keeping flobber worms ar- alive. Uh, it is, put- unfortunately, keeping flobber worms alive for an hour. <sighs> they don't have to do anything because they do best when just left alone. Moving on. I'm sorry, guys. I even said the word flobber worms. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're right there. <laughs> See, this is, this is the thing. My brain can send me the messages. It's yeah. like, you moron! <laughs> Just listen to this once! Stop thinking about like Razor Beam! I can't! I can't stop, guys! 
It's like it's like the guy working down in deep memory is like, we got it, sit. And the guy working at the desk is just like, I don't. He's watching, this doesn't like, make the, sense to me. Uh, watching I, the Ike Razor Beef cartoon. Yeah, like, <laughs> on the desk. All the answers are just like right here. It's uh, uh, the worst. The third quiz master question of the game. <clears throat> This question was submitted by Kelsey and voted on by patrons. What is the name of Hagrid's special favorite Thestral? Oh, man. Bonus point, why is he or she Hagrid's favorite? Oh. Um, do you have it? No, I am positive we have put this on like live streams before though. Like, I know. It's a great question. Yeah. It's a really great it question. Is, this is a good one. This is a, this is great Harry Potter trivia. Oh, man. I was so, because I came across this one one day. I think it was during COVID when we were writing quiz questions. And I was like, no one's got this. No one's going to know. And now I don't. So I did. And now I'm gone. For some reason, <clears throat> if you guys want to know what's coming to mind currently, it's this. I'm not exactly sure why. But, but that is what comes to mind. That's what's coming to mind for me, but I'm sure that's incorrect. Oh, I feel like it just flitted right there. I feel like, I feel like it just flitted across my brain. I, I know that you asked this question. Uh, I, don't I, don't, I, remember it. I don't know it. Well, I mean, we could go multiple choice. But what if my total stab in the dark is somehow is near it? Is it Razor Bird? <laughs> razor Beam? Razor Beam. See, <clears throat> My only hesitation is giving you multiple choice. Jay, you have not missed one yet. I know. Oh, that's why I want them. Now I'm like, I don't want to miss it. All right, I'm sure I don't have it right. Choice. I just want to answer. You just, you just don't want me to get the perfect score. You're halting me. <laughs> uh, this, this here's is my special favorite. All right, ready? Uh, Three. Two, one. I said Mobius. I said Cer Cerebrus. Cerberus. Cerberus. Ben's weirdly like kind of close. Uh, it is Otenebrus. Otenebrus. Oh my this gosh. Tenebrous. Tenebrous. So I got the us on the end. I am really <laughs> starting to wonder. What is wrong with your like. What is wrong man? with my brain? Yeah. Uh, oh, Tenebrous. Bonus point. Why? Oh, mine said the oldest. Oh, did it? Okay, okay. yes. Do I get uh, the bonus point or do you yes. have to get the right? Oh, okay. You get the bonus point. Okay. He's the first born in the forest. Man, I'm like really having a little bit of like an internal battle with it's myself so right now. I'm like, how could I be that close? Right. When I had no idea. Tenebrous, Cerberus. I got the us on the end, yeah. the Mobius. We've been watching, we've been talking about Loki too much though. We have been. Yeah. yeah it's been coming up yeah. a lot. Okay. Question number 11. When Harry's class first met the blast ended Scroots, which of these was not something they tried to feed them? A is frog livers. B is ant eggs. C is grass snakes. And D is toad eyeballs. Which of these was not? Which of these was not? It is a single of those answers. <coughs> All right. All right, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Grass snakes. I said ant eggs. It is toad eyeballs. Wow! He Man. just had like he just had a pot, uh, like a like a crate of snakes there, <laughs> ready to go. Just just wriggling <laughs> just about. A, just a crate of snakes. I mean, is that really the most just, alarming thing in a room that also contains a boxes of blast ended scroots? I it's, mean, it just seems weird that you'd have a box of snakes at all, especially because it's like a school mascot, and you're like, hey, why don't you feed the school mascot to my made up creatures? Box of snakes, great name for a band. Box of snakes. Yeah. yeah. You guys ready for Box of Snakes? Ah! Unexpectedly, a country band. Wow, that would be us. Yeah, this is like Copperhead Road. You know? yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> the first wizard country band. Yeah, right? That has to exist, though. Uh, box of Snakes. Xenophilius Lovegood, huge fan. Huge. huge Box of Snakes fan. Right, there's yeah. no doubt. We should have Xenophilius with like a, a old school band team. We need, that, should be, that should be a t-shirt we make is just the the... The t the the t-shirt for the wizarding country music band Box of Snakes. Yeah, with like tour dates on the back. Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing! And all the tour dates could just be every single time Harry had to fight off Voldemort. <laughs> so it's like May third, nineteen ninety one. Yeah. May third, nineteen ninety two. Yeah. It's always in spring. Why is it always on May third? Yeah, it's probably not always on May third, but you know it feels close. Question number twelve. 
In Hagrid's lesson about Nifflers, whose Niffler won the competition to find the most Leprechaun gold? Ready? Three, two, one. Ron Old Weasley. Ron Weasley is Ron. Ron! Question number 13 in our fourth and final Quizmaster question of the game. This question was submitted by Kathy and family and voted on by patrons. What did Ron win when his Niffler found the Leprechaun gold during fourth year? Wow. Oh, um, um, pretty sure that's right. Right? Yeah. All right, three, Probably. two, one. A large bar of chocolate. It slab is. Slab of Honeyduke's best chocolate. It is indeed a slab of Honeyduke's best chocolate. Nice. Does this count? I mean, yeah. Okay. I think it counts. Yeah. Super. In other news, our emergency slab of chocolate is also now back in stock over at CarlinBrothersCoffee.com. It sure is. And it is delicious. It is such good chocolate. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I remember the day that we got to try it for the first time and me and you, who we have like plentiful snacks here yeah, in office. Oh, lots. And me and you just literally sat there and devoured an entire slab. It was like a game of like, oh, you had some, I guess that means I can have some. I will take as big as pieces I can without seeming impolite. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it was like, oh, last piece? I just, I'll, 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 well. Don't mind, mind if I do. Oh, yeah. Also okay. worth mentioning that it does sell out pretty fast. So if you're interested, carlinbrotherscoffee.com, link in the description down below. Question number 14 and our final question of the game. Uh oh. What did Fred and George bet Ludo back on it? Oh <laughs> my gosh. Dude, that has nothing to do. No, I'm was, not doing this it was question funny again. The, the multiple choice question or the multiple choice answers for the last question included uh, 10 galleons and a fake wand. Oh, oh. nice. That's amazing. So, That's that amazing. That made me think of it. Uh, question number 14. In Harry's care of magical creatures, OWL, he had to demonstrate the correct handling of what creature? This is year five we're talking about here. Year five. Year five. Okay. Deal. So it probably was something then along those lines, which means this is not. Oh. Okay. I'm just going to have to rewrite. Could it? Mm, and does he do well at it? Because he doesn't take it again. He does well. He passes everything except like history of magic and right. divination. Right. Well, he does. I think, I think yeah, he makes Hagrid proud in the moment. Okay, this is my answer. All right, well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this, and hopefully I'm not embarrassed. But anyway, three, two, one. Unicorn. Is that a hippogriff? The correct answer is bow truckle. Oh, oh my bow gosh! Truckle? That is what that I had is, written down. That is just so it seems like so much less advanced than year five. It does, but <laughs> I do remember that he was supposed to like part of his homework was to like put together like a diagram of a bow truckle, sketch and a bow truckle, and he's almost like he's like holding it, and I think something makes him mad, and he almost like crushes it, and then like cuts his thumb open because they have little scalpel hands. Completely dangerous. Good for picking locks. Good for picking yeah. locks. Yeah. It took me far too long to realize that Picket. Yeah. Was a picking locks. Yeah. Name like, for mm -hmm. Fantastic Beast, Newt's primary little dude there. Right. Yeah. Who's very adorable. Yeah. Oh my God, I had bow trickle written down. My screen will show that I erased it. And wow. I was like, cause it felt like one of those things where it was like, okay, like it's not easy to go and do the whole bow sequence with a hippogriff. Right, yeah, that would have been good. But then like, I was thinking it had to, I think it was, some, I think Grubbly Plank is the one who teaches him about bow truckles, yes. not Hagrid. Yeah, yeah. she definitely yeah. sticks to the curriculum. Yeah, and I was like, it's probably something they learned that year cause it's OWL level. Right. And then she also talked about unicorns, which is why I did that. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Oh, well. Oh, W-L. Oh, that was pretty good. And now we want to give a huge thank you to the quiz masters who support us over on Patreon. Especially to all those quiz masters who submitted questions and voted on them for today's quiz, specifically Emma Butler, Nicole McGee, Kelsey, and of course, Kathy and her wonderful family. Oh my gosh, I love it when it's a family affair. Thank you guys so much for submitting such Hard questions. Yes, you guys' questions are always the best. If you would like to join and v submit and vote on future questions, you can head over to patreon.com slash supercarlinbrothers and choose the quiz master tier. Also guys, other fun community things that we have on the horizon is Super Carlin Brothers Spirit Week, which is going to be starting on June 20th of this month. We have fun themes for each day, including Mickey Monday, Pikachu's Day, Lightsabers versus Wands Day, Thor's Day, Formal Friday, and the SCB 10 year anniversary day. That's right, you guys. 10 years of Super Carlin Brothers will be celebrated later this 
month. We hope you will plan ahead and join us for Spirit Week. Also, on that Friday, we are going to be hosting a trivia live stream live right here on the channel. Mark your calendars now. It is going to be medley trivia covering all the different fandoms we cover here in celebration of 10 years on Super Carly Brothers. Thank you guys all so much for watching this entire time. If you have been, if you've been watching for all 10 years, let us know in the towel section down below. Guys, as ever, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to let us know how you did in the towel section down below. Also, if you wanna see how Hagrid is secretly rich and probably a millionaire, you can check out this video right here. Otherwise, until next time, bye. bye.